I wish you all a successful meeting and I would like to invite the special representative of the Secretary General, Mr. Zahir Tanin, to open the event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Diana, for your opening. Distinguished uh, guests, colleagues, and friends, we are happy to welcome you to the 2017 UN Global Open Day on Women, Peace, and Security in Kosovo. At the outset, I extend my heartfelt thanks to the participants of at, at today's event. Our keynote speaker, President Yahyaga, the representative of the Secretary General of the UN Office in Belgrade, Simona uh, Miklesko, Ambassador Jan uh, Brato of OSC, Andrew Russell, the UN Development uh, Coordinator, and uh, Flora Matsula of UN Women. I would also like to thank all uh, panelists the Agency for Gender Equality uh, of the Prime Minister's Office, the Chairperson of the Women's uh, Caucus of uh, the Assembly of Kosovo, Kosovo Police, as well as the judges, prosecutors, journalists, and civil society representatives attending today. I thank you all for your interest your support and your commitment. I would also like to extend my thanks to the many people who have helped to put together such an impressive program, in particular the Gender Focal Point team at UNMIC. Since 2010, Global Open Days have celebrated the achievements following UN Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace and Security. The main objective of the Global Open Day is to provide a platform for women and girls to raise their concerns to UN officials about matters that affect their lives and prevent them from participating as equal members in society. Resolution 1325 generated momentum for change and challenged global institutional apathy. As such, this resolution was a most important step. But it was only one step. Practical implementation of this resolution remains a challenge. Resolution 1325 evokes an idealized role for women in peace and security, but the empirical observation is clear. The role of women in peace processes is not yet systematic. The role of women in sustainable peace is not yet as it was envisaged. Noble intentions and goodwill cannot alone ensure the active participation of women in peace and conflict resolution. Political determination, concerted action, and institutional and cultural reforms are needed. We must also consider the peace and security or objectives within a broader spectrum of societal needs. Women in peace and security should be seen as a part of a larger landscape of equal participation in political, social, and economic life. We might consider that women have increasingly participated in politics, including leadership since the 1960s. But despite the passage of time and considerable achievements, the profile of women in politics in society remains, remains limited. In this respect, 
Focus on peace and security might be too narrow. Women should play an active role in all vital processes, in all walks of life. Equal participation requires equal access, equal resources, and equal acceptance. Participation itself is not the goal, but rather is one step towards the goal, that being the ability to exert influence for positive and sustainable change. To quote Secretary General Guterres, and I quote, historic imbalances in power relations between men and women exacerbated by growing inequalities within and between societies and countries are uh, leading to greater discrimination against women and girls around the world tradition cultural values and religion are being misused to curtail women's rights to entrench sexism and defend misogynistic practices end of quote it has been said that in many places women experience a continuum of discrimination and violence from womb to from the womb to tomb their potential as well as their rights being systematically ignored by states and communities this situation must be challenged. Women must be able to vote, to run for office, to take part in policy in decision making, to participate in an active and healthy media. Ultimately, women must be not only beneficiaries, but the drivers in social and economic recovery. Women must participate and contribute to all stages of the peace process from conflict prevention to peace building, from peace building to recovery and development. This is the United Nations commitment to women in peace and security. Political settlement between conflicting parties can end conflict, but too often fails to bring lasting peace. The voice of women is essential in shaping a future vision free from the divisive narratives that are too readily manipulated to keep post-conflict societies trapped in yesterday's reality. Women are more likely to be victims of conflict than its perpetrators. Women feel the pain of conflict in a way that can be masked by male vanity and arrogance. The woman's perspective is essential if there is to be meaningful reconciliation at the societal level to shape a shared and peaceful future. Since I came to Kosovo, I have met women from different communities and witnessed the, that regardless of ethnicity, language or faith, women do reach out, speak to and understand each other. Kosovo women have made it clear that they can learn from each other and amplify the effects of each other's work in building a peaceful, <laughs> prosperous, and democratic society. The existing legal frameworks and mechanisms created an enabling environment, but the implementation of this framework has been insufficient and challenges remain in all sectors. We value the opportunity to learn about your different experiences and to hear your suggestions for addressing the remaining obstacles to making your full contribution to political, economic and societal progress in Kosovo.